Football fans, welcome to another Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. We finally have a full slate of preseason games this week. Which games are you looking forward to the most? Then, how much should starters play in a preseason game, especially early on? Some, none. We'll give you our take. And then finally, do we ever think that there will be an instance where an NFL player has enough power to get their head coach fired. We will discuss all that and more on a Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. Let's roll! You are Locked On NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Football fans, it is a Thursday edition of the Locked On NFL podcast. We have a full slate, as I mentioned, of preseason games. Finally, the Hall of Fame game, yes, that's a one-off, week one, whatever you want to call it. But this is truly week one of the preseason. It may just be preseason, but it does feel good to have a full schedule of football back in our lives. We're going to talk about all the games that really stand out to us from this first slate of games. Before we do, I want to thank you guys for making the Locked On NFL Podcast your first listen every day. Make sure you subscribe on whatever platform, Monday through Friday, free NFL content for you guys. Check out the Locked On NFL YouTube channel and subscribe there as well. I am one of your Thursday hosts, Tyler Rowland from the Locked On Titans podcast, here with my faithful co-host, Alex Clancy from Locked On Cardinals. We're going to dive right in here. Preseason, week one, in my mind, week one, forget the Hall of Fame game. Uh, What games do get you even a little bit excited here and and I'll go first. Give Alex, you know, sure. a time to look things over and really think about it. But well, for you. me, yeah, you know, I'm just trying to <laughs> trying to do the Lord's work here. For me, I, I'm, I guess I, I'm kind of excited to see a game like the Dolphins versus the Buccaneers. That new offense. You got a guy like Julio Jones down in Tampa Bay. The new offense in Miami, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. They add Teron Armstead. Not sh- certain, of course how much starters are going to play. But I think that game could be pretty interesting as well. Is there anyone that stands out to you? I mean, we talked about this before the Hall of Fame game. Like, for preseason, at least early on, I am more about coaches than players. Because, like, sometimes even the star draft picks aren't going to play in the first preseason game. You know? So it's like, it's good that it's jumped down to three now, but it's also like, well, the first one still really doesn't matter. So it's like, well, it does matter for the bottom third of the roster of who's going to make the squad, right. who might, make, who might right. get, their, get themselves a paycheck on the practice squad. But, like, the Browns are going to fascinate all year. Like, it doesn't matter really what hat – like, who's going to be wearing the uniform. It, it's going to fascinate me no matter what. And they're playing Jacksonville in Jacksonville. Yep. I'm not sure they're if Trevor Lawrence is going to play. No, He's he playing. That's they right. So, it. Yep. Yeah, check out Tony Wig. Uh, Tony Wiggins does a great job there for Locked On yeah. Jaguars. He will yeah, tell he you what he thinks. Uh, I promise you that much. But I mean, that's really the one. Like, you know, Russell Wilson's not going to play. Things like that. It's just, I, I, I. Oh, and there's one thing, and we'll talk about this in the next segment. Matt Ryan is going to play a half. Is going to play a quarter of football for Indy. Which, I mean, now I'm excited to watch Indy also. Because it's like, what the hell is that 37-year-old or 36-year-old doing during the first preseason game, even though it's a new system? Yeah. But I think Cleveland and Jacksonville is probably one, even though it's not marquee when the regular season starts. With the preseason storylines, I definitely think it is. No, I I think that's a great one. It was one of the ones that I was watching on. That'll take place on Friday night at 7 p.m. As you mentioned, you know, Matt Ryan playing a ton. Uh, Dan Campbell and Arthur Smith, the head coaches of Detroit and Atlanta, respectively, have both agreed that they're going to play their starters throughout the first couple of series, maybe the first quarter. Uh, I'm excited to watch that. Obviously, the Lions being on hard knocks, you get excited. But Atlanta does have a little bit of a, of a quarterback battle going on with Desmond Ritter and Marcus Mariota. So that would be very interesting to watch. And they have two pretty high-profile rookies 
on those teams with Aiden Hutchinson for Detroit and then uh, Drake London for Atlanta. Another one that I want to watch, and, and I can't lie to you, it's kind of like why people go outside and look at car wrecks and they can't take their eyes off of it. I want to watch the Panthers versus the Commanders uh, just to see the, the, the battle at quarterback and how bad it could be. All indications are that Carson Wentz, shocker, is struggling with inconsistency and inaccuracy uh, in camp. They also, I believe the commanders have Sam Howe. And then for the Panthers, it, it seems clear that Baker Mayfield is ahead of Sam Darnold, but I don't think either of those guys are too incredible or you know so good that they don't have to play in the game. I think they want to keep up an illusion of a quarterback competition. So not only that, but Matt Corral and P.J. Walker are exciting backup options on Carolina. So I think from a quarterback perspective, I'm excited to watch what could be a little bit of a train wreck in uh, Washington versus Carolina. So that's one that I'm interested yeah. in. And I mean, before we move on, let's just take a collective second here and just breathe in that there's football this week. I know. It's been it's, so it's been a super eventful, especially for your the team that you cover and the team that I cover. Like, yeah. it's been super eventful. This has not been a death valley of off-seasons because that doesn't even – I mean, that's not even a possibility anymore with the NFL and the 24-7 news cycle. But – we did it. Thank you for watching every it. Thursday, Monday through Friday on Locked yes. on NFL and focusing on, you know, the Locked on Podcast Network as a whole. Like, we've made it. And there's football about 24 hours away. You know, like the, the Hall of Fame game was fine. It was like, if there wasn't any other indication that they should remove that game from existence, was the, was the weather delay for an hour before it? It's like, man, we're just delaying what's going to be a crap box of a football game and then now, like, and then one thing we need to do, let's just say the good, the, just the good aura of let's have no major injuries, no injuries yes. during preseason. We've already seen Ryan Jensen go out. Uh, their backup center was injured yesterday. I believe it wasn't as, as, um, yeah, Robert Hainsley big, and yep, Jakeem Grant. It, yeah. Makai Becton is out again. Like Becton, left tackle. Yep. We got to feel terrible for him. Like he was supposed to be the cornerstone of the Jets offensive line and the dude just can't stay healthy. You got to feel bad. So, Let's just hope through this weekend and on through the regular season, there aren't as many major injuries as we've seen in recent memory. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I, I wish we could just turn injuries off for the preseason, but we all yeah. know that's not necessarily how the game works. But we're going to continue moving forward here. We want to talk about how much starters should actually play in the preseason. How much does it matter as we get forward here? Before we get into that, I want to tell you guys about the best tasting protein bars mm. in the galaxy from our friends over at Built Bar. You get the best of both worlds with Built Bar. You get all the health benefits of a protein bar that you need. Low calorie, low sugar, high protein, high fiber. But you get all the benefits of a candy bar. The bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, a ton of delicious textures like the puff bars, which are marshmallowy, the crunch bars, which are... Crunchy, seems self-explanatory there. <laughs> All the different delicious flavors. Um, I mean, the white chocolate cheesecake is a favorite of mine. I know a, lo a lot of people love the, the coconut brownie. You got the cookie dough chunk puff out right mm. now, which is just a, 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 a monster of a bar, man. It's absolutely delicious. <laughs> Go to built.com right now. Use the promo code LOCKED15. You're going to get 15% off your order once again. That's promo code LOCKED15. For 15% off at built.com. Welcome back. Locked on NFL Thursday. Alex Clancy locked on Cardinals. Tyler Rowland locked on Titans. Just letting that Titans flag fly, man. Just let her rip. Why the hell not? Follow him at Tic Tac Titans on Twitter. Follow me at Clancy's Corner. Please like, subscribe mm -hmm. to the Locked On NFL YouTube channel. Preseason is upon us about four, you know, 30 plus hours away, 36 hours away. This is, we made it. We've got the tailwind now. Until February, uh, we've got the tailwind of football. And Tyler and I are going to be here every Thursday to talk you through some of the best national stories. Um, how much should veteran slash rookies play during the preseason? Now, there are certain there are certain parameters with this. Like, let's take his homegrown, Tyler homegrown team, Traylon Burks, okay? He's the de facto wide receiver one or in waiting if Robert Woods kind of takes that role earlier on, be the training wheels for Traylon Burks. And, like, how much does Burks play for the first three weeks of the preseason? 
How much are Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry play? Derrick Henry coming off an injury. Ryan Tannehill just signing that massive extension. You want to keep him in bubble wrap. And that's pretty much the you know microcosm for the rest of the NFL. Stars right. and potential stars, how much should they play? And I think it's an unwritten rule, and it, it is an unwritten rule, that you're not going to be drilling people during preseason. Like, there are things that just aren't going to happen because everybody wants to make it to the regular season as healthy as possible. So let's break this up into two categories. Before we do veterans, because that one is a little bit more written on the wall, say you have say your first round pick, regardless of position, first and second round pick, regardless of position, how much would you like to see them play, maybe percentage wise, through the first three weeks of the, through the three weeks of preseason? I, I think they need, depending on how high they are up on the depth chart, you, you know, first, second round pick, let's say, uh, let's say they're a starter. Um, okay. If they're a starter. I think they should play at least a quarter. You know what I mean? And if and if you're a, a backup as a like Traylon Burks, for example, is listed as like wide receiver three. He's a, the Titans list a two wide receiver set in their offensive depth chart, and he's the you know second string wide receiver behind Robert Woods and Nick Westbrook Aquino. Well, for me, I, I want him to play a whole half. Why not? You know what I mean? I, I think for rookies, if you're not an immediate starter, rookies need to play period, to get acclimated to the speed of the NFL. That's my belief. First round, second round, whatever. you got to get up to speed. If you're somebody who's going to be counted on to be a starter, then I get it. Play play a quarter. Play three series. Wh- whatever it may be. But if you're not a starter like Traylon Burks, you need to play the whole entire first half a- as somebody who's a rookie who hasn't played. Especially, you know, and think about somebody... But do it differently. Think about a Drake London. Think about a Garrett Wilson. You know, guys like that who they're going to be expected to be starters. You can't throw Drake London or Garrett Wilson or Jahan Dotson out there in their first game in the NFL with not enough reps. I, I guess I I come from a my father was a coach. I believe that reps are king. I think people should play. And let me throw this hot take out there. I know that the just conventional wisdom with uh, preseason games is you don't play early on and then you play the most in the last game. I would do the opposite of that. I would play my guys the most in the first preseason game, then decrease in the second one, and then nothing in the third one and give them two full weeks to get rested up without full go competition before we start the regular season and use that as a buy. I'd get them in early rather than late. So I would just flip conventional oh. wisdom on its head personally just to throw that in there but for rookies if you're not a, if you're a starter play a quarter if you're not play a whole half cuz you need to get up to speed if you want your rookies to be contributors right away they have to get used to the speed and let's just call it what it is practice intensity is not game intensity so i think rookies need that personally yeah i get it i understand uh unfortunately conventional wisdom is flipped but- and people other people aren't going to other teams aren't going to do what you're going to do. So how much are you going to get out of playing third against third stringers? Sure, you'll get actual real game application, but it's like, why would you rush it? It gives less of a chance for injury the, the longer you wait. And I know that, like, let's be honest here. Week one of the regular season is the is the first preseason game where everybody cares. It's just kind of like a you throw it yeah. out. Look at what happened with the Cardinals in Tennessee last year. And the Cardinals right, beat him by right. a four and beat him by a 30 burger. Well, and it Chandler really Jones. had no it had no real tie to how right. good the teams were at that given time. But that's the time. And that's, say again. Especially at the end of the year, you know. Right. From the, and that's the thing. I mean, you saw what you saw how great the Cardinals could be in a vacuum when everything went right. You saw how terrible the the uh Titans could be when Derek. Henry was getting stopped on the goal line like he never gets stopped. Like, you just saw it was the polar opposite of what you would expect. Doesn't matter. I think, I mean, I agree with you. I think rookies, depending on where you are in the depth chart, like, if this guy is a Calvin Johnson wide receiver for you, don't play him as much early on. You know what I mean? Like, if you want to protect your investment and he's a bona fide start, but, like, the thing is, and we're going to talk about this in the final segment in, in, in my Alex Clancy mystery segment that Tyler doesn't know about, like, the wide receiving core this year, nobody knows who's going to be, be the best wide receiver. You have Garrett right. Wilson, who looks more like Devontae Smith, and you have Drake London, who's an absolute Adonis, and it's just like, you don't know. 
You have, and there's yeah. everything in between. Jahan Dotson's 5'11. He could be the guy in Washington. Like, you have no concept of who the best wide receiver is going to be because now the market is flooded. The market is absolutely flooded with great wide receiver talent. They could all be good. Yeah. But it depends on it depends on who the quarterback is, who the play caller is, all things like that. So I agree with you. Like it depends on where the depth chart is. Now, for veterans, I'm not playing anybody the first game at all. I don't care if you're new to the system at all. Especially if you if you're Matt Ryan, doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make what is he gonna hand the ball off twice, throw one? Yeah, that's insane. Out? It's like who cares? Yeah. Like for for a substantiated for a guy that is ingrained in that offense, like a Ryan Tannehill or Kyler Murray, if we're going if we're going home cooking, don't even put pads on for week one. Obviously, or they call it week two. It's week one. Of the it's week one. Game. Yeah. It's like it's like the second round of the NCAA tournament with the playing game being first round. Dumb. Yeah. Um. Dumb. The second the second preseason game, maybe two series. Like I don't need any more than that. It's like get on the field. And all it takes is one defensive end getting towards your quarterback. You're like, get him out, get him out, get yeah. him out. Like it doesn't matter. And then week three or week three, the third preseason game, you play the first half. Like I feel like that's the traditional ramping up. You seem to think differently because you don't well, want your stars playing the last preseason game as much. Right. And and the one big thing for me is joint practices. I feel like joint practices in the NFL these days are the new preseason game. Like Coaches and veteran players, starters, the players who will make the impact in the game, they're getting more out of the joint practices than they're getting out of the preseason games. So for me, like my example, I would go week one, let my veterans play a little bit, get their toes in the water, blah, blah, blah. And then they don't need to play the next couple of preseason games because we're having joint practices again. Just bringing it back, the Titans have two joint practices in back-to-back weeks, and then they play the preseason game against that team that they're scrimmaging against all week later. So they'll practice against the Buccaneers and then play them. The Cardinals, the Titans are going to do joint practices with the Cardinals before they play them in their preseason game. The Titans aren't doing a joint practice with the Ravens right now. So play your starters in that game and then let your starters play in the joint practices the next two weeks and not put them out there in the game where guys feel like their roster lives and they could live and die on their roster and they're fighting for everything tooth and nail and let them rest off the joint practices. So for me, I agree with you for a veteran. Other than, and I think I've said this before, other than offensive line and maybe the defensive backfield where I feel like chemistry is super, super important, I'd let my starting offensive line go out there for a series or two. Even, you know, but quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, guys who are going to take the brunt of other dudes, you know, tackling them. I know that it's very physical on the trenches, but those are guys who have to get used to that physicality. I don't need Derrick Henry to get warmed up getting tackled. He'll be all right. So offensive line is one that that I do want my veteran starters to play a little bit. No, I mean, I get it. And unfortunately, that's the most volatile position, um, as you mentioned. Um, All right. So... Mystery segment coming up next. Alex Lanty on Cardinals. Tyler Rowan locked on Titans. Follow him at TikTok Titans. Follow me at Clancy's Corner. Please like, subscribe. Turn the noties on for Locked On NFL. People said noties to me with notifications on, on the D bag yeah. scale. The kids these that? days from zero to hundred. Depends how old you are. If you're our age, that's a, a ten out of ten douchebag move. Okay. If you're under eighteen. I'll, I'll let you get away with it. The okay. kids are cool. We're not. We just got to accept it. So that's a minor's word. That's not That's not a, an adult yeah. word. Got it. Yeah, uh, yeah. That seems Tyler like a Gen, uh, Gen Z thing, not a millennial thing. Yeah. Okay. Coming up next, who's going to be the best rookie wide receiver in 2022? A lot of things to take into account. Tyler Rowland gets excited when he likes the mystery segments that I bring up. We'll hit yes. that next. Lock on NFL Thursday. Rolling back with you. Final segment, Locked on NFL Thursday. These are fun, man. We've been with you all summer. Thank you very much for hanging out. Thanks for making Locked on NFL your first listen each and every day, free and available on all platforms. YouTube, Apple, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher. That's it. That's all I got in my short-term memory for where where you can (laughs) find it. So, listen, I just did my first fantasy football draft in dynasty formation. This is the Mm. fourth year I'm in the league. I had like, 
the first round was like, okay, a couple running backs and then all the wide receivers. And it's like, how do you differentiate between the arc of potential greatness for all these wide receivers? You could look at Garrett Wilson, Ohio State. He's pound for pound the best receiver coming out of the draft. Okay. You could say that and make and make a case for it. You could make a case for Jamison Williams, who yes. was the guy that, you know, he tore his ACL in the national championship game. It's a little bit more of a slow burn to get him on the field. But Jamison yeah. Williams looked to be the guy. Drake London looked to be a potential second round pick and then shot up the ranks. It was like a Caleb Farley shoot up uh, or JC <laughs> Horn. Sorry. JC Horn just catapulted yeah. up the ranks to a top well, 10 take guy. Yeah. Right. Exactly. There you go. And then Good you example. have guys. In the middle, like Jahan Dotson, unsure, a little bit undersized, didn't go to an mm -hmm. absolute powerhouse school like the others did. But you have right. so many wide receivers, Traylon Burks, George Pickens, who went, who, who fell to the second round out of Georgia. Like, and the, the quarterback play in Georgia was atrocious. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he was able to go, like, if he had, if he went to Ohio State or something, he may have been the first wide receiver taken off the board. But you look, there's a potpourri of skill set, size, height speed, like everything to you with the situation that they're in, with the quarterback that they have, who do you think will have the best rookie campaign from all the rookie wide receivers drafted this year? See, this, this, this is tough because like we see every year, wide receiver is the one position where as a rookie, you could come in right away and be a stud. I mean, look, Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase were top 10 wide receivers the moment they stepped on the field, like immediately. Yes. So, um, you can do it, but I think, you know, kind of like a fantasy football discussion, it's all about who's getting you the ball and opportun opportunity and volume. So, I know that maybe this is a little off the beaten path, but I think that Jahan Dotson has a chance to be the most productive rookie wide receiver. He, I think that other than Terry McLaurin, there is no, I like Diami Brown out of North Carolina last year. But he's just simply not the talent that Dotson is. And Dotson's play style gives him the ability to get a lot of catches quick. I think that Dotson could have a Jalen Waddle type year where he catches over 100 passes. I, like, I, I really I really could see that. So I think Jahan Dotson right away. And yeah, you know, Penn State is an Ohio State Bama and all that. But Penn State is certainly no big time, you know, no college program to sniff at. Um, right. So I, I, I guess... You look at Garrett Wilson, I just think Corey Davis, Elijah Moore, there's a lot more competition. Well, you don't targets. believe in Zach Wilson either. You don't believe in I, Zach Wilson either. Well, I wouldn't say necessarily not believe, but Zach Wilson wants to throw the ball down the field. like mm -hmm. he. And I think that in Washington, they'll be screaming at Wentz to throw it short. Please throw it short. Just throw it short. Throw it short. So uh, I, I think that Drake London doesn't have good enough quarterbacks. Honestly, if I had to give you a second option – It'd be the fourth round rookie, Romeo Dubes. Yeah. Uh from Green Bay. Just yeah. because I know he's got Rodgers, and the only other person fighting is Alan Lazard. So I think Dubes, uh, I, I, I it's D-O-U-B-S. Yeah. Dubes, dub. Some people say dubs. We'll find out in the regular season. Heck, sometimes these guys play 10 years of their career, and like Travis Kelsey, tell us that we're saying his name wrong for a decade. So I don't <laughs> even feel bad about pronunciations anymore. Uh but I will say that, that Romeo Dubs, Dubs, whatever, would, would be my second choice behind Jahan Dotson. He was my second round pick in my dynasty draft. Nice. He was. Yeah. Um, yeah, I drafted Isaiah Spiller first because I feel like I feel like Austin Eckler is gonna take less carries and he's gonna be a plug and play guy, third down, three and down. And he's back. wearing down. Eckler's always hurt. Yeah. So they they're gonna try and utilize him in different ways. Uh mm -hmm. check out David D for all of your um uh, like what a name, your, all David Drogemeyer. Yeah. I mean, Lord, what what a sweet name. Yeah, check out Locked On Chargers. Yeah. Um, for me, this is just because we said 2022. Okay, just because of that, I think there's two, and I think for completely different reasons why. I think that if Christian Watson is healthy, he will win Offensive Rookie of the Year. And I know it's crazy. I know because they have they have I think it's crazy. Randall Cobb. It's crazy, but it's Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rod there are so many targets. The target share that Devontae Adams had is massive. It was Michael, I mean, it was Michael Thomas four years ago. 
it, it seemed like every time he was getting 15 or 17 targets a game. Randall Cobb's going to break down. Alan Lazard's never been a wide receiver one. And Christian Watson is big. He's an outside receiver. And mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers throws wide receivers open. All they need to do is practice the back shoulder throw. That's all they need to practice. Right. And it's going to take a while. Right. But Devontae Adams wasn't great until Jordy Nelson got hurt and then left. Christian Watson has an opportunity. And I feel like with all the other guys, Jamison Williams, I don't trust, you know, uh, Jared Goff, you know, Zach Wilson, Brian Tannehill, that's a run first offense. Like, it, it, the only other guy is Sky Moore. Now, Sky Moore, that's another. And Juju Smith-Schuster seems to be the darling that's going to be like, he's going to be the guy that can emerge as a top five receiver in PPR formats this year with fantasy because there's such a huge gap. Travis Kelsey's going to get doubled a lot. Sky Moore. Like, that's a great what, pick. Like, what? Patrick Mahomes did with Miko Hardman, Demarcus Robinson. You put those yeah. together, and this dude is way more talented, both of them, not as fast. But I mean, Sky Moore has shown, and he was supposed to be a second round pick. Like, this is going to be the year of the young wide receiver, and it's going to be so awesome. But I, I err on the side of wide, I err on the side of quarterbacks, and both of those schemes are going to be, are going to be wide receiver friendly. So those are the two. I think Christian Watson, that's a, it's a stretch. But the odds are probably super sexy, long, long odds right yeah. now for him to be offensive rookie of the year. Yeah. And I, you know, I just think that like if he's healthy for 17 weeks, he could be an outsider to win it. Couple of, one, I love your Sky Moore pick because not only is he going to be able to catch the ball from Mahomes, he's getting carries out of the backfield in practice. I mean, they're literally lining him up next to Mahomes and giving him carries around the edge and stuff. So I think that Andy Reid is going to get super super creative with how he uses Sky Moore, and that could increase his production. And not only increase his production, but it'll make him more interesting to talk about if he's doing like Debo Samuel-type type roles. I do want to say this. Get out of here on something fun. I think Watson is going to have a terrible year. I don't <laughs> believe it. I liked him. He's been hurt. If Watson and Dubes both play 10 games, I bet you a six-pack of delicious beers that Dubes outproduces him. Catches, yards, touchdowns, better than Watson if both play 10 games. Do no. you accept? I accept the bet, but I don't accept the parameters. You don't like Red Velvet Cake, right? No, no. Okay, no, so no, this no. is what's going to happen. Sweet Sky. This is what's going to happen. If Dubes outperforms Christian Watson, they play 10, say they play the same amount of games, okay? Okay. And this is, we'll do some sort of, are we, are we doing yards? Are we doing receptor? Are we doing touchdowns? Like, how all are we waiting this? A composite score. We add all the that numbers is, together. That is fantasy a recipe. Points. What about fantasy points? Fantasy points in a PPR format, 100%. Yes, PPR okay. fantasy points. Christian okay. Watson versus Dudes. Okay. If yes. they play the same amount of games, is it the same amount of games or is it over 10? I, I say if they both play over 10. because Over 10. So yeah, if I mean, one plays more and that's just part of the wager, I will yep. have to watch you on this program eat a piece of... Of red velvet cake. Okay. Right, that's fair. And if I yeah. lose, I will eat a bowl green bean casserole. Of green bean casserole. Yes. Okay. And I'll have a barf bag right next to me. Yeah. I will watch you fall in love with red velvet cake. So we <laughs> both win. But I feel like that's the bet. Okay. Right. If right. they play right. the qualifier is over 10 games yes. and we're going to fantasy football points, PPR form. PPR. Put it on the board. Lock that on the Thursday, baby. Yep. That is going to do it for us today. <laughs> Football is back, baby. Can't wait to be back with you guys next Thursday. Tomorrow, Chris Carter, your boy Q. Uh, not my boy Q, your boy Q. Going to lead you guys out on Friday, breaking down preseason action and getting you ready for the weekend to come. Football is back, baby. That's going to do it for us today on the Locked On NFL Podcast.